already learned about copyrights limitations, facts and ideas, fair use, and expiration. Here's a quick review of fair use and how it works. All the creative work out there that is protected by copyright. Like new songs and movies, do I always need permission before I can reuse someone else's creative work? Sometimes you don't. There's this really important part of copyright called fair use. It allows us to use copyrighted work in limited ways that are still fair to the artist. I guess that's why it's called fair use. Fair use shows up in a lot of news reporting, commentary, education, and in new creative works that use others' work in entirely new ways. Do you want some exposition? Some information through a song? Quoting from a book or showing a movie excerpt as part of a review is fair use. Recording a TV show on a DVR so you can watch it later is fair use. Fair use is decided on a case-by-case -case basis using a four-factor legal test. The four factors are weighed together to decide if you have a fair use or not. Number one is the purpose and character of your use. If your use is for commentary, news reporting, criticism, or education, then that favors fair use. For example, Using a copyrighted song in a school project for a real educational purpose, that's usually a fair use. However, if you take your school project and want to publish it online, then you have more to consider. Like how much of the song have you used, and will it hurt the market by being a substitute for the original? One key question that the courts like to ask regarding this first factor is, has the material you've taken from the original work been transformed by adding new expression or meaning? So it becomes part of a genuinely new work, rather than just repackaging the original. Next, think about the original you want to use. How creative is it? Is it highly creative or just a bunch of info? The more creative and original it is, the stronger the copyright protections are. Oh, I get it. Like Harry Potter is super creative, but a video of facts about fungi? Not so much. Right! Next ask, how much have you used? Did I use more than was necessary to make my point? Did I take the heart of the thing? These will hurt your fair use claim. Lastly ask, could my use of this work replace the original in the marketplace? Could it undermine the creator's ability to sell or make money from the work? For example, if I take a whole movie and add a minute of commentary to the beginning of the film to say, this is a great movie. I think everyone should see it. Let's watch! And then I copy the whole movie to my short commentary and upload it to my blog. That is not a fair use. Just consider the factors we discussed. It's not highly new and original. It used the whole thing, not a small portion. And because the whole thing is there, it would be able to substitute for the original in the marketplace. On the other hand, if I make a video of me explaining why I think it's such a great movie, a genuine commentary, and I show only a short clip, for example, to illustrate a strong protagonist, that would be a fair use. Here's a real life example. The makers of the movie biography about the famous heavyweight boxer, Muhammad Ali, did something similar. They used a short clip, just 41 seconds from one of his boxing matches in their film. When the owner of the footage objected, a court ruled that it was fair use because the amount of footage was small, and reusing it in this way wouldn't affect the owner's market. Remember, the four factors have to be considered together to decide if your use is a fair use and not just illegally copying someone else's work. So that's fair use. It means that sometimes you can use a copyrighted work without the author's permission, but you do have to think carefully about things like why you're using it, how much you use, and whether your use could hurt the sales of the work. Now, click forward to see fair use in some real-life situations.